great okay welcome if you are joining live sorry about that admin I'm just gonna share something with you this is what we're going to discuss today we'll look at my 2016 mid-year review and what's working right now okay so this is Thursday the 28th of July 2016 I know it's not exactly mid-year but I thought you know it's time to do something like this and usually I do one of these mid-year reviews and I'll just talk about it briefly so what I do is I set myself goals for the year goals for English learners and my platform for English learners so I actually started doing one-to-one -one lessons but then I now do group courses and online courses so video training courses and that's what I focus on so that's what I currently do and my goals for the year as you're going to see in a minute revolve around this so we're talking mainly about the marketing side of teaching online that's what I like to focus on and that's where I can help you the most so hopefully um, my email has gone out and people are joining a lot more people are joining now Gabrielle is here good to have you Gabrielle everyone I'm just going to check the comments as we go through now I've got a couple of things I want to share before we get deep into the presentation but just know that we're going to cover some really really good stuff today firstly I've just got this come through this morning and it is I'll take this off it is my mic stand and what this does is it stops the vibrations every time you touch the desk although at the moment I keep banging into it so I need to get used to where it is and there's also this little pop filter as well which apparently helps the audio quality and it, it helps um, it doesn't pick up on the plosives so it takes those away I don't truly understand it I also want to show you my office because you might not have seen this just to give you a backstory I was teaching at home but things have got very hectic at home so I moved into this space downtown and so far so good so far so good if you're just joining live please introduce yourself if you're watching the replay either on Facebook or on YouTube then also check the description because I'm gonna have some good resources for you feel free to ask me any questions as we go through this um, there's one more thing I wanted to share because in my email I talked about having lots of new ideas okay and you can join my email list if you're not on there again in the description but I talked about how at the moment I'm getting all these ideas and I said it's probably because of mushroom coffee and this probably confused you but basically this is what I've been drinking recently and it is just fantastic it's got cordyceps and chaga in it hopefully I pronounced those two things correctly but the idea is that you get the buzz from caffeine without getting that crash or the jitters and also I find that it helps me really focus it helps me become more creative and that's why I think I'm getting all these ideas at the moment okay um, enough about mushroom coffee let's get back to this now if you have any questions about how I'm doing this right now on Facebook live then please ask them below um, and also quickly let me know if you are currently teaching online so just leave a comment below if you are teaching online right now and also if you want to expand let me know if you're doing this independently or for someone else let's talk about goals okay and setting goals because as I said before the reason for doing this is because I set goals every year for myself now oh just have a quick look in the bottom right hand corner again this will be in the description teachingeslonline.com slash goals and you'll be able to get a free guide for that and this just goes through a guide of setting goals and how to do this in a smart way so be sure to check that out later goals now the reason 
it's important to set goals is because it sets your intentions. It helps you focus on exactly what you need to do depending on what you want to get out of online teaching. So your goal for this year might be to get your first five students. It might be to start a new YouTube channel. It could be to implement email marketing and get your first 1,000 subscribers. So once you have the goals outlined, I recommend restricting these goals as well. And what I mean by that is putting a deadline on them, saying I want to achieve this goal by this time. And once you have that, then you can really start to set out a plan and work out exactly how you're going to do this, what you need to do to achieve your goals and how you're going to do it on a daily basis. Um, just gonna quickly read the comment section. Please leave a comment, love to get the feedback. Chris says, yes I am, doing things independently, very cool. Bob is here as well, hello Bob. I currently teach in China, but I would love, or I'd like to teach online to Chinese people when I finally leave China. Um, yeah, my advice here, if you're thinking about doing this over the long term, then start putting things in place now. Start building an audience now and use your current contacts to help you do this. Get them to follow you on Facebook. Get them on an email list that you build and we'll talk more about that later. So I set some goals for the year. I'm gonna go through what those are now. The first one was to double course sales or to double my income. Now when I first started doing one-to-one -one lessons, I was very content to earn well, I was earning three times what I was earning in Spain, but I was just very content to stay at that for the first two years or so. But over the last three years, I've strived to double my income every year. And this is something that I think it's a great thing to focus on. Now, you might not be at that stage right now, but know that if you start investing in yourself, then you can take it there if you do different things. If you do things like online courses, group lessons, sell products, affiliate things as well. So that was my first goal. Um, goal number two was to build a team. And goal number three was to grow my email list by 500%. So you might hear a lot about email lists and you, if you follow me, you'll know I always talk about this. Um, quick question as well, those watching live, those watching the replay, do you currently have an email list? Just let me know in the comment section. Again, I can read the comments on my phone. So please let me know if you currently have an email list. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comment section. Let's go through these goals now. And with this, I wanna share some of the lessons I've learned and why I find it is important to do this. So firstly, I put a little tick here next to double course sales because I am on course to do this. Shanti is here, good to have you. We've talked about email marketing a lot recently. Um, so yeah, I'm on course to double my income, double my course sales. So this is obviously, you know, if you have an online business, this is what we're trying to do. You can do this by obviously offering lots of value and helping people, that's your foundation. But once you have that set up, then it's important to have a strategy in order to increase your income. And this is how I've done it this year. Basically, I have optimized the sales process. I have increased conversions. Now, the sales process if you've come to my webinars before or if you're part of my course, you'll know that it's everything from the initial time you meet the student online until you make a sale. And there are lots of little pieces in between that. And the way that works really well is to give content, to get them onto your email list by giving more free stuff away, and then to follow up on this and to send lots of good information and to build that trust, the desire um, for your courses or lessons. And also just to build that relationship between you and the potential student.
Another thing that I've done is I've changed the pricing structure. So what I originally had for English learners was a mid-range premium price level course. But I also had a payment plan for this and I didn't like how that worked. It confused people. So what I decided to do was to split the course into three levels. I had a, a basic, a premium, and then the complete. And what was interesting is that I got a lot of people going for the complete version. So this is telling me that the price points are probably too low. So that's something I'm going to implement later for English learners. But changing the pricing structure has led to more core sales from English learners. Next thing is um, I introduced a tripwire. Basically what this means is it's a $7 audiobook which lowers the barrier to purchase and then it also shows people what I can offer. So it turns a subscriber into a buyer but it also shows them what I can offer and it helps me send a different message to those people instead of a similar message to everyone. That's quite an advanced thing to do, but this is something you can do once you have the basics set up. Um, and finally, I've just targeted more people. So obviously, when it comes to sales, it's about the optimization, the conversion rate, it's about your pricing, and it's about the number of people who you want to have coming through that process. So it's not just about numbers here, it's about getting the right people through this sales process. So going to go back to the comment section. Uh, who goes here? Good to have you join in. Again, if you're just joining live, then please say hi and let me know if you're currently teaching online. Um, we have um, Chris say no email list yet and Bob saying that he does. Very cool, Bob. So your current, if you have that email list, then get those current students that you have, if you can do this legally and it's within your contract, um, onto your email list it's going to help you make that transition at a later date. Okay, let's have a look at some numbers now. So my email list has grown on average by 68 new contacts per day. So my goal was to grow it by 500%. It's currently, it's increased by 250%. So I made this my focus. I made this my intention. And I've done things that will help grow this list. I focused on tactics and the technology I need to use to grow my email list. Now, if you don't have an email list already, I do have a, a free download. This is um, on email marketing. I'm going to leave that in the comment section at the end of this lesson. So be sure to check that out. But you can also look at the software that I'm using for this at teachingeslonline.com slash AC. My advice here is to go for the light version. You don't need the, any other version. You just need the light version for now. And it's $9 a month to get this set up. So let's look at how I've done this email list growth. More people are finding me organically. And this has been a big thing for 2016. I'm going to share some um, graphs later that show this. But people are finding me organically through YouTube, Facebook, and Google as well. And that's been a huge change in 2016. I've also offered specific downloads. I'm going to show you an example of that in a moment. And I've optimized pages. So I've done a lot of testing to, to see what works and what doesn't so that people are opting in to my email list. Now here, I'll go back one, here is an example of a landing page, okay? This is something that I set up specifically for one video. So I made a video on how to learn English fast and I said you can get these tips as a PDF. And this is getting very specific. You know, when you start out, just have that one guide that you give away for free to help you grow your list. But if you're more advanced and you're starting to think about ways to try and get more people on your list and to make it more specific, then you can do this as well. You can set up specific landing pages for videos and different downloads. So that, that is something that I've been working on with my email list. 
going back to the comment section um hugo's here saying hi we've got margaret is here as well cole is here yes i'm teaching online very cool um nelly says hi transferring jobs in september so i'll need to move from the classroom to online yeah um the advice that i had before start building for this now start building some kind of audience online the best way is through email but also think about facebook and youtube or any social media channel as well and obviously you might need a website or you will need a website at some stage to help you do all of this hugo says um we are building our lists and setting up our automated marketing campaigns following your advice thanks yeah um, I have quite a lot of advice on this. Again, I'll post the link in the comment section later. Sabrina, how many landing pages do you have now? Very good question. Probably about 20 to 30, something like that. Some are old and I don't really use them anymore. But um, yeah, I have landing pages for webinars, for, for specific downloads. And also you can think of a sales page as a landing page as well. Okay, seeing that one, Facebook. Let's talk about Facebook now. Look at this chart. Look at this graph. And this just shows how um, how much my Facebook page has grown in 2016. And I've got some tips on this in a second. But basically, it started off at around 3,000 this January. If you don't know my entire backstory, I started a new brand. Or I changed my name, but I had to create new Facebook pages and YouTube channels. So it was like I was starting from scratch again in 2015. So it went from about 3,000 to today, I've got around 13,000. But as you know, it's not just about the likes, it's about the engagement. Now I shared this video um, a couple of days ago, and within 24 hours it, it had reached 6,143 people, which is just great. Half my audience saw this video in their newsfeed. But look at the um, views as well. It got 960 views. It's got over 111 likes or loves and 34 shares and 18 comments. So I have recently been finding that Facebook is pushing my posts out there. They are showing my posts to people. Now I did a Facebook Live lesson for English learners yesterday and that has already got over a thousand views um, it, it's just got a huge reach and it's probably going to end up with about 2,000 views in total without any kind of advertising. So if things are working very well for me on Facebook, I want to share a few tips if you're using Facebook and a little bit frustrated right now. Be active, okay? So the first thing is you have to be active, you have to be consistent. Post things. Twice a day is probably optimal. So if someone comes on your Facebook page and sees that your your last post was in June then they're not going to stick around for long so be sure that you're active and post often use it natively do the live lessons upload videos directly to your Facebook page don't just send people to a link to click on your website the smart way to do it is to get them to watch your native Facebook content and then do something at the end of the lesson we'll talk about that soon Boost posts for engagement. So I found that if I started to boost posts, then those same people would be engaged on further posts or future posts. So this can really help you give that initial boost. Yes, it's gonna cost you money, but it's worth it if you want to focus on your Facebook page and growing this Facebook page. Engage people and respond. I ask very specific questions within my Facebook posts. It gets people commenting, and then I go in and respond to people as well. And I just wanna say again, live video. Now I'm just gonna take a quick break from this, just to talk about doing live video. Because most people at the moment, and this is what I recommend starting with, is they do live video on their phone. You know, Facebook live video is all about getting on your phone and just talking to people live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But I am using this software called Open Broadcaster Software, which allows you to do what I'm doing right now, where I can use my webcam, I can use this microphone, and I can add slides and different pictures as well. Um, so for example, I hope this works. Yeah, I can add this here, take it off. It's just something that's really interesting to use. And if you do wanna learn more about it, 
then send me a Facebook message or just email and I'll give you some links for that. So just going back to this, organic Facebook reach. So be active, use it natively, boost posts to, to give you a boost and your Facebook page a boost, engage people and respond, and also live video is good too. Um, so guys, if you're enjoying this as well, if you're watching the replay or live and you're on Facebook, then just give me the thumbs up or the heart button. You can just do that while you're watching. And also, if you're just joining, then please introduce yourself and let me know if you are currently teaching online independently. So let me know in the comment section. Let's talk about YouTube now. Now these don't have specific numbers on them, but if I just grab my little device over here, look at this tool down here. This is new for Google. You can use this little laser pen, which is cool. So this was January, February, March, April. Something happened in April. I started to make a video every single day for YouTube. You can see what happens to views, okay? So that's um, April, May, June, and July is lower because um, we haven't finished July yet. So it's about 10 days out. So obviously, the more videos you make, the more views you're going to get. But I also reached 10,000 subscribers recently from my YouTube channel, which is great. Um, YouTube is a fantastic platform. If you are a little bit worried about using it, then I recommend that you just start small. You know, get a video, um, record a video on your phone, on your webcam, and just upload it to YouTube. And just start small and get feedback from people. And you take those baby steps and you start um, gaining confidence with it all. I also want to say at this stage that it's you don't have to use Facebook. You don't have to go all in on YouTube. This is what's working for me right now. And it's because I'm using these two channels. Twitter is not working for me because I never use it. If I used it religiously every day, it would work for me. So choose platforms that are going to work for you. I suggest one or two that are your focus, maybe even just one to start with, and then go in on them. Use them like they should be used. Speaking of that, here's a few tips on YouTube. Again, be active and consistent. Make a lesson once a week, once every two weeks, once a day. Just stick to a plan and upload on a consistent basis. Again, it's about the engagement. It's about including the people who watch your videos and getting them to do something, to comment on your videos, to like them, to share them. Ask them to, and get them to answer specific questions, just like I talked about on Facebook. Also be yourself. People want to connect with you as an actual teacher. So don't be scared about putting your personality out there and just get started. Don't worry about the equipment. You know, I have lots of good things for you if you want to learn more about the equipment. But for now, whatever you have is probably enough. I was, um, I just uploaded a video to YouTube about half an hour ago, just before starting this lesson, and I actually just use this exact same setup. Now I have an advanced camera, but I like to mix it up a little bit, and I thought, why not just do this while I'm here, and just make a video where I just spoke for three minutes, and upload it to YouTube. One of my most popular videos recently, the one I just showed you, I filmed that on my mobile phone by the window over here. It's not about the quality of the video, although it does help. It's about the message and about you coming across on camera. And you can only improve that if you get started. I'm just gonna go back to the comment section. We have Sabrina saying, hi Jack, I teach online independently, fantastic. Daniel says, hello Jack and everyone, I'm also doing online teaching, thanks for sharing your advice and knowledge, my pleasure. And uh, Chris says, any tips for Instagram as well as a platform? Yeah, I, I'm doing okay on Instagram. A, a good tip on Instagram, okay, is to link it to your Facebook page. And when you do an Instagram post, it will post automatically on Facebook. But 
it's again, it's you know, it's it's about using that platform, staying consistent. The good thing about Instagram, what I like about it, is that you can do one minute videos. You're restricted to one minute one minute videos. Going back to what we talked about with goals before, you know, giving yourself restrictions. So it means that you have to make a video within that minute. So you can't go on and on and on. Instead, it helps you get your first videos out there. I know Shanti is doing that as well. She's creating videos on Instagram and uploading them to Facebook as well. And it's a way to get started with videos and get yourself out there and to also get that confidence to do something else. But Instagram obviously is all about visuals. It's all about the photos and the videos. So think about good visuals and what kind of lessons you can give on that. And also think about what kind of videos you can make in a minute. Because the minute restriction. Okay, let's just go back to this. Anyone have any questions, leave them below. Again, if you're watching the replay, please leave questions. Now, all that traffic and all that engagement on YouTube and Facebook is fine, but we want our learners who follow us on these platforms to do something. And this is where it goes full circle now. So in July so far, I've had 2,204 people who have gone to my opt-in page to download a free guide. That's not, in, sorry, the free book. That's not included in the other landing pages that I have. So 2,200 people so far in the last three weeks, four weeks, have gone to download this guide. Now what's interesting is this. 732 people have come from Facebook. And that's 33% of all these people. 551 have come from YouTube, 25%. And what I realized just when I was making this, and I'm happy with this, 94 people have come directly from Google, searching for free book, free book for English learners, etc. So those numbers are really promising for me. Um, I'm really happy to see that this is all happening organically now. But it has taken me time to get to this level. And it's just over the past three months where I have gone all in on these two platforms. So I now mm -hmm. spend a lot of time using Facebook. I spend a lot of time creating content for Facebook and YouTube. So these kind of things will bring in the results if you have things set up in a right way, okay? And the right way is to do things natively, so to share lots of good videos on Facebook, to share videos on YouTube, to help people on these platforms, but then send them somewhere so that they can download something for free. You know, if you follow me for a while, you know that I always talk about this, but I don't see enough people doing it. So they download something for free, and then you can send them and funnel them through a specific sales process. So let's have a quick look here at this now. So think about ways that you can get started and get a small win with all these things. Now, I spoke to, someone just sent me an email today um, talking about this concept. And it was strange because it's one of these things that I've just written down about including small wins into my courses. And it's something I want to implement because it, it just helps you build that momentum. So the first thing I want to say about this is maybe get started by uploading a video from your phone. So have that small win. Upload a video to Facebook or to YouTube from your phone. It could be to get someone to comment on your post. So maybe at the moment you're, you're making Facebook posts and no one's commenting on them. So a small win might be to get one, two, three people to leave a comment. It might be to get someone into your trial lesson. And again, if we set our intentions for these small wins, then we're going to do what we need to do in order to make it happen. So it might be for you to get someone into your trial lesson. And it also might be to get a landing page set up, just like we've talked about, to get one person to sign up 
on this new landing page. Okay, I wanna talk about building a team now because that was one of my other goals as well. And I can't leave a good, nice tick next to this one because it's something that I've not been able to do thus far, but it's still early in 2016. I have hired a couple of people to do specific tasks, but I found the way we worked was quite clunky. You know, I was thinking the other day as well, and this is going off topic a little bit, but I was thinking the other day how cool it would be and what, well, what it would be like to actually have someone, like say, in this office building who worked for me. You know, moving online allows you to hire online people, to hire workers who are living in wherever it may be. But I was thinking it could be kind of cool and different and probably more beneficial to hire someone in the local area so that you can have that face-to-face -face interaction with them. Just something I was thinking about. But it is something I'm going to do. Um, you know, by the back end of this year, I want to have a strong team. But this leads on to something else. And I talked about this in an email. And it's about investing back into your business. So the money that I spend on building a team is an investment. What I hope it is going to do is to help me grow my business faster. So if you want to invest or think about investing, it all depends on your goals and current income. So for me, this office was an investment. In fact, this was three times the price, not well, two to three times the price, I can't do math in my head quickly, of um, another office that I had a look at. But the other office had super slow internet. It was noisy, it was old. It, you had to go upstairs at certain points, you know, just those little things. This office, it has super fast internet, it's quiet. It has great air conditioning. It has a balcony to get away from things. It has a shared meeting room. It has some really good people working here. So this was an investment for me. And um, it's so far, I can tell, it's just gonna be a fantastic thing for me to do. But it's important to know that this all depends on your goals and your current income. So your goal might be right now is to get as many online students as quickly as possible so that you can transition into doing this full time. Your goal might be to replace your current income with this online income and therefore if you are currently working and have an income consider reinvest in whatever you make now back into it to help it grow faster. It's something to think about um, and not a lot of teachers have that mentality to think about investing back into the business to help it grow quicker. Now for me, as I said, this investment has been a new office. I've also you know, got this new microphone stand and I see it as something that's going to help me improve. Also, ad spend to. So another way to invest back into your business is to build your audience through ads. And this is what I've been focusing on through 2016. So I've been really trying to get this ad spend right and testing things and to track conversions as well to know exactly what's working. And um, I'm bringing in some really good results and I'm now looking to scale this. Also team members, you know, another way to invest back in, as we just said before, is for team members. So I just wanna share this as well. Many of you already know about the Teach English Online course. Now you can check this out at teoc.co, okay? That will redirect you to teachenglishonlinecourse.com. I thought it would be easier for you guys, teoc.co. Now inside, the course, there's this um, basic course basically, six sections that go through your niche, introduction, setting up a website, landing pages, all those different things, how to get students, or worksheets that come with this too. But what many people don't know is that there are now over 50 bonus lessons as well, which have specific tutorials on email marketing, 
on video creation and, and um, marketing, on setting up landing pages, on how to write copy, on how to do mastermind groups and things like that. There also, there's also a forum, lots of worksheets, and you're going to get support from me too. So do definitely check this out, teoc.co. I'm just going to go back to the comment section now. Um, we have a few people asking some questions. Sorry if I didn't answer these before. Greg says, hi Jack, do you recommend closed Facebook groups for students? Um, do you mean like going into closed Facebook groups and interacting with people? If so, definitely. Or just any kind of Facebook group or Google Plus group or LinkedIn group. Go in and interact with people. The problem with Facebook is that you can't use your brand page to comment on posts in groups. You have to use your personal profile. And that brings up the issue of if you want to use your personal profile to do things like this. But if you go into groups and just hustle, help people, post things, respond to comments, leave videos there, you're going to get a lot of traction. You're going to get people who want to follow you and want to know more about you. So it just depends on how much you want to do that. Um, Daniel says, cheers for that, Jack. How about WhatsApp? Do you reckon that could work? Definitely. I get so many people saying, do you have a WhatsApp group? Um, I don't. I, I'm not really that interested in starting one unless it can be separated from my current WhatsApp group. Because I like to use that for personal reasons with my friends and everyone else. And when it comes to, you know, it's the same issue with the Facebook um, profile. If anyone is using WhatsApp in a way that's working and in a way that you're happy with, then let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and Hugo says, I think your point about getting things ready the right way is so critical. Yeah, what, what we're discussing here, and um, I, I need to write more posts on this. I do have a post actually called uh, Transition teaching eslonline.com slash transition. Let's see if I can post it in here right now. Um, basically, it goes through what to do, let's see if I can multitask, what to do if you currently have a teaching position or if you, you know, if you currently have a job that you're happy with and how to build your audience and your brand on the side while keeping this job so that you can put yourself in a position to make that transition once you're ready. And I've done this in lots of mini ways. For example, I was building courses on the side while, I'm gonna post this and then I can get back to it. <laughs> Hopefully that worked. Anyway, I, um, I built up courses on the side while I was teaching one-to-one. -one. So I made the transition into online courses while keeping my current job which was one-to-one -one lessons. And this required, you know, a sprint. It required me to actually just focus and work hard at that time to build it on the side, and then I could make the transition once those core sales got to a stage where I was comfortable with. So I hope that makes sense. There are different ways that you can make transitions at all different stages of your online business. And it is something I go through inside the course I have. There's a tutorial called the TEOC Roadmap, and it tells you what you should be focusing on depending on where you are currently and also what your goals are. So if you want to teach part-time and you're currently um, working a full-time job, then it, there's some specific things you can do to help you build for that in the future. If you want an online schedule right now, like tomorrow, and want to fill it up tomorrow, then there's certain things you can do as well, like doing all these short-term methods I talk about, advertising, going into Facebook groups and just getting to know people, using your old contacts, etc. So everyone, I am going to end it there. It's gone longer than I expected it to, but I've had some really good questions. I hope you found this useful, and I'm thinking about doing this or something similar again next week, maybe once a week. So let me know what you would like to see in these live lessons as and when I do them. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please give me the thumbs up, the heart, and share this with anyone who needs to see it, anyone who would find it useful. Your feedback is always um, 
What's the word I'm looking for? I want to receive your feedback. That's what I want to say. So send me emails, send me Facebook messages through Messenger on my page, and I'll see you in the next live lesson. So thank you for being here. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.